share uh, my research opportunity. My name is Correcte, Gloriez Vizé. I'm originally from Rwanda. I am genocide against the Hutu, intergenerational transmission of uh, trauma um, among young people who were um, conceived during the genocide. The genocide of the on April 7th, we start um, um, for the third year against the Tutsi. It has been a long time, but the young people and the survivors of the genocide do continue to carry the markers of that human violence, and I uh, do focus my uh, study on that. So I will start with uh, um, I will start by a little bit talking about Rwanda, and uh, that's for um, we have Burundi, Congo, um, Tanzania, Uganda as my neighboring country. It is a landlocked country. Uh, it lies as 35 miles south of the equator, and um, it is um, the population uh, as of um, 15 million, so it is a small country. Um, dismissed the genocide, but the country has so um, um, showing you where the problem is located. Uh, in 1994, Rwanda experienced um, the genocide against the Tutsi, and this was a result of colonialism that has happened in Rwanda, uh, where the um, during the uh, colonial time, the population of Rwanda was divided into three ethnic groups, the social constructed um, ethnic groups, Hutu as a majority genocide group estimated at 85 percent, Tutsi. Uh, uh, fourteen percent and uh, Tua, which is a, the smallest uh, um, uh, group, uh, estimated at one percent. Again, these were um, social constructed ethnic groups that led to the genocide against the Tutsi. Um, so, in nineteen ninety four, Rwanda experienced the most catastrophic uh, genocide in human history, where during a period of one hundred days. Um, over one, one million people were killed, and uh, about 350,000 women were It is estimated that only one in six um, women were able uh, to survive, and about um, 2,500, 10,000 children. The number does change depending on this reporting. This, but this is just to show how much, how many children were born of genocide or rape. Um, again, it, uh, this is a uh, during a period of only 100 days um, that the genocide took place in Rwanda. I do study the intergenerational transmission of trauma, especially focusing, as I said, for um, the prenatal exposure to genocide and genocidal rape. So just a little bit to uh, explain the context. Individuals who were conceived during the genocide were exposed to maternal stress related to genocide or genocidal rape for those who were born of genocidal rape. At the very beginning of their uh, uh, body um, development, in, during the first trimester of gestation, which is marked by rapid formation, differentiation, and the growth of embryo, given the influence of early adverse, um, adverse experience on uh, subsequent health outcome. These offspring are likely to highly um, to um, uh, um, at risk of um, yeah, at risk of stress related chronic diseases. Um, the time to expose the subsequent life experience, especially for those who are born So even after the genocide, even though the genocide happened during the period of one hundred days. After the genocide, the women who were raped continue to experience stigma, stress, and all consequences of being 
uh, raped. So the children born or individual born of um, these women continue to express uh, experience stress even after the genocide against the Tutsi. Which does a big difference In terms of uh, um, uh, the study focus on uh, uh, those who were uh, conceived during the hundred days of um, genocide. So I have uh, three groups. One group is uh, of Rwanda conceived via genocide or rape by survivors, but who were also uh, who conceived the rape via genocide or rape. I have another group, uh, the second group is with those who were conceived by genocide survivors, but not um, through the genocide, through the genocide or rape. And they have a control group of Rwanda who were outside of country during this and those were in this country, but these are the uh, individuals who were born descendants of women outside the country because before the genocide, there were other political and risks that made people go outside the country from 1959, um, 60s, a long time ago. This control group is not really, it's not those who have left the country because of the genocide. These are the ones that have been outside the country for a long, long time at Kind, kind of like a descendant from uh, the genocide. Of course, as one that I wouldn't say that they were completely disconnected with the genocide. I would say probably it's a control group, but are indirectly exposed to genocide. Um, this is part of my doc uh, doctoral uh, research. So I did collect different measures because the stress does affect different um, uh, systems, uh, different aspects of life. I did correct surveys, uh, looking at mental and physical health outcomes. I look at the anthropometrics because it's a, a, a theory that suggests the effect of, uh, um, of course, with the exposure at the first trimester, there is an uh, effect even on the body um, uh, development. Um, and also I did collect uh, blood samples to study the bio, um, uh, biological changes that might have with, 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 um, happened before the pre-exposure to genocide. The result of my studies have been published um, so far in two um, uh, So I would, I would like to provide um, uh, key findings, um, but you can, you can uh, The key findings from my um, study um, is that consistent with uh, the, the prediction, individuals exposed to genocide, to maternal stress related to genocide only had the poorer um, mental and physical function compared to those who were born of outside the uh, mothers who were outside the, of the country. But we also noted that those born of genocidal rape uh, had poorer health outcomes, mental and physical health outcomes, compared to those who were um, um, born of genocide survivors, but not through rape. So this, those individuals uh, showed high, um, they had more uh, scores on depression measures, uh, PTSD, pain interference with uh, uh, daily function. And uh, we also observed, because I measured the um, adverse childhood experience, we um, we observed that for those born with genocidal rape, the, there was interaction uh, between um, the prenatal exposure to genocidal rape and adverse childhood experience, which did uh, uh, exacerbate the health outcomes, especially for those born with genocidal rape. I, uh, for the result for uh, uh, the, um, the blood samples that I took to do the DNA verification analysis, I'm still um, doing the analysis. This is the preliminary result. We did observe um, that the prenatal uh, exposure to genocide had um, um, did affect gene. Um, there's an association, uh, it is associated with the gene associated with the stress response. But when we adjust for uh, adverse childhood experience, which is the postnatal after the genocide, especially for those born of genocide or rape, this uh, um, postnatal did attend the, the association. We did also look at the um, age, uh, the effect on uh, age, um, the aging, uh, the effect of prenatal exposure to genocide and aging process. We did find the uh, that the causality enriched crops. Um, these are new uh, crops that uh, estimate the aging. We uh, um, find that they, they do predict 
among those born of genocide survivors, 50 individuals born of genocide survivors, there was association with uh, the accelerated or damaging or um, uh, 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 adaptation age um, with a greater effect for those who were born of genocidal rape. And uh, um, we did also see that that was the experience did not attenuate the association with the men even after controlling for um, adverse childhood experience. So uh, I thought this also, this is an example of how the social environment does affect our lives, not only the mental health outcomes, but even the biological, and we also have this, even after 30 years of genocide, they, they continue to see the effect of genocide, uh, the genocide, especially among those who after the genocide continue to experience um, some form of stress. Uh, so there is a virus, direct virus as a genocide that was committed against the parents, the mothers. And in our case, because we look at those, our focus to those who were born of genocide survive, women um, uh, survivors of the genocide. But also we look at the uh, the continuing um, stress that people are, are stressed on, um, um, especially those born of genocidal rape, the women continue to experience the genocide, um, the stress related to genocidal rape, but also these young people, when you look at the demographic data that we analyzed, I didn't put the result in there, but you see also the difference in terms of the social uh, economic status among those born of genocidal rape and those born of um, survivors only, which does continue to um, add in the effect of um, to their mental and the physical health outcomes. And also, I think it is also, um, um, you can see it, I think it's result from the blood sample from the DNA mediation. Um, we did also look at uh, this um, one, um, if I take one, if I remember, we'll go back, um, the result. The result from the duration of uh, prenatal exposure, which showed the shorter um, prenatal uh, shorter the, the shorter duration of prenatal exposure did show uh, a better health outcomes for those who were uh, exposed to genocide only, especially because this is where you can see the effect of genocide only for those born of genocidal rape. You see the effect of genocide, but also the effect of postnatal, and also the uh, the part of uh, gestation after the genocide, where the women continue to experience the genocide. But if you look at those who you can only uh, tease out the effect of genocide exposure, we uh, find out that the um, those who had a shorter duration of prenatal exposure had better health outcomes compared to those who were uh, exposed for a longer period of time. Um, if I can maybe summarize what this uh, result shows, they do show that the um, um, effect, if we can prevent, of course, preventing the genocide and other form of human uh, uh, violence is always the best, but when they happen, the shorter they happen, the better the outcomes, but also the lives after the um, these um, uh, violence also needs to be pay more attention to the survivors, especially those born of genocidal rape, where it is very difficult to um, uh, even exp express what has happened, seek for help. And I think the intervention for, the result of this study highlight that the intervention after the genocide would have shortened or have improved the health outcomes. Um, I think that is what this result show. Um, the study that I conducted as a, a, my doctoral research was a, a cross-sectional study. So as a next step, I'm looking at uh, uh, doing a, a cohort study, a longitudinal study, but use a um, community-based approach to continue following up these young people. They are now uh, close to um, 30, 30 years, uh, which I think we expect to see more into their lives uh, change and effect, but also being able to continue to follow up on their uh, children as now some of them are getting married, they have children, others are getting married, they are making their, their own families. Uh, so I am in the process of initiating a longitudinal study to continue following up on this effect of genocide in human um, being or uh, across generation. Of course, as I think about these topics as a, as a Rwandan, as a survivor of the genocide, I also do um, include other, I have been uh, 
they think more than having to think about what does it mean to share this type of result with people in the country when they have decided to um, uh, construct the series and uh, to conclude that they need to move on. How do you go back and share this type of result that show uh, impact, long term effect on health? So I have been uh, working with uh, my colleagues to integrate um, trauma and violence informed research, knowledge mobilization, but also research as I move forward with uh, the um, uh, the old study and the new phase, the uh, next phases of my research. Because when you do research, you're doing it in a way that you're thinking about whether to share this research. First of all, sharing, because most of the time we do presentation, we do um, pub, uh, publish papers, but very rarely that we go back and share this result. But sharing it again requires um, uh, approach, a trauma and violence informed approach to be able to not do more harm, but be able to share result in the way that builds um, strength and help people to continue to move forward by taking care of the effects of these um, human events in their lives. So those are the new uh, questions that I'm uh, uh, thinking and I'm trying to work uh, on with my new project. Of course, with the intervention, the intervention is again complex because these are the social, um, economic, um, health, really complex intervention to be able to address this effect. But what the result do shows that as we think about the, um, those all components, we can be able to reverse or at least manage the effect of the, this long-term effect of um, intergeneration um, effect of uh, the genocide. Thank you so much. <laughs>